بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم ما بعد Yesterday we spoke of ta'at. We're, we're starting the first portion of the kitab. Imam al-Ghazali said he will break down the kitab into two major portions, and that is the two facets of taqwa in itself. And we said that taqwa is to fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid the prohibitions. So therefore, he has split the kitab into two portions. One is ta'at, which means acts of worship and obedience. And then the second portion would be uh, acts of uh, things that we must avoid, prohibitions, um, such as, you know, uh, the, the major sins, things of that sort. So yesterday we, we spoke of the introduction to the ta'at section, and that was talking about uh, fara'il and nawafil and how Imam al-Ghazali has compared that to prophet. Uh, initial investment and profit in itself. Then he quoted a very beautiful hadith Qudsi in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke of how an individual will get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is originally with fara'id is how a person gets close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then how one becomes the, the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is through nawafil actions. Then we finished uh, where Imam al-Ghazali spoke of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in existence and is aware of every single thing that is happening in our lives, whether that is our thoughts, whether that it was, it was our physical actions, and, and like this for the entire universe. So he finishes off this section by saying, have some adab, because you are continuously being watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Therefore, you have to have certain types of etiquettes for every type of action you have. Your daily actions that you go through on a normal daily basis, there are some etiquettes for those because you are being watched. And we know that every time we're being watched by someone, we have to be on our best behavior. And as believers, we are cognizant of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us all the time. Therefore, we have to be actually on our best behavior all the time. And that is what's beautiful about our, our deen and Islam. We have the perfect example of someone who was on the best behavior possible 24-7 at all periods in their life. And that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And so he's saying that we have to do the same. And he finally ended off by saying that listen carefully to the chapters that are going to follow that are coming now. And these are the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, from the time when you wake up from your sleep in the morning till the time you go to bed at night, these are many different aspects that you will face throughout your life, uh, through your day, inshallah. And so we're going to start talking about that now. So he begins the, the first chapter, Faslun fi adabil istiqadi min al -nawm. It is the chapter regarding the etiquettes of waking up from sleep. So he starts the kitab about waking up from sleep. So it's like, the kitab itself is a journey. What we experience uh, when we wake up throughout our day, obviously we're going to use the restroom, you're going to eat, you're going to do many different things throughout the day, and then eventually you're going to go to sleep. So similarly, the kitab begins in this way. And similarly is the life of insan. The entire life of a human being is can be comparable to a single day in the life of a human being. You wake up filled with energy, filled with hope, filled with, you know, an idea of what you want to do, what you want to become throughout that day. Then you work hard towards that goal. You have that schedule. You follow everything you have to do. You reach your goal for the day. And then you feel tired at the end of the day. You relax, you go to bed, and then it's over. So similarly is the life of a human being. As we are born, we are children filled with hope, filled with energy, we have expectations that are put on to us. We also have dreams that what we want to become, what we want to fulfill in our life. We will go through all of those uh, different aspects and hopefully uh, having uh, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we hit all of those objectives and, and those uh, challenges and we surpass them. And we finally realize our goal. 
and then we get old we we reach that pinnacle that climax we get really old we get tired you lie down and then you finally sleep for uh, the final sleep uh, inshallah so that can be compared to a human's life as well so our day we should take a lesson from that many scholars even say if you observe salah you have your fajr dhuhr asar maghrib isha then you will be reminded of death just by looking at salah it's a reminder that you will die one day you wake up for fajr same way full of energy full of you know expectations you get to dhuhr now you know that's the the pinnacle of the day you're doing so many things you're very busy asar the majority of your work is done then you 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 start to relax you come back home it's maghrib you're relaxing now this is this is your retirement you reach your salatul isha your your entire mission of your life is complete now it's the the sleep uh, so that is a human being's life and we have many reminders of this throughout our day even in the five times salawat so let's begin with the the adab of waking up from sleep imam al ghazali says fa idha istayqadta min an nawm fajtahid an tastayqidha qabla tulu al fajr when you wake up from sleep try your best try really hard make an effort to wake up before the coming of fajr so we know this is not talking about when the salah is performed in the masjid it's talking about the time period of fajr so before the time period of fajr is the time period of tahajjud so he is referring to wake up for the time period of tahajjud waliyakun awwala ma yajri ala qalbika wa lisanika dhikrullah ta'ala try your best that the first thing that comes into your heart and the first thing that is spoken on your tongue and your lips is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try your best that the first thing when you wake up is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we always try really hard and we have a lot of hope that when we have a child the first word of that child is Allah we'll just say Allah 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 to that child in hopes that that the first word that the child has is not you know abi or ammi uh, it's rather allah and that is what we want from from our children so similarly likewise in our journey uh, through life that is all reflected on our daily journey so on our daily journey the first thing that we should say when we wake up is a remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and imam al ghazali recommends a dua to us faqul inda dhalik say when you wake up Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur The masnoon dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam All praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who has given us life again after he has given us death And to him is the final return So this is a very beautiful dua of our beloved Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life after he has given us death What does this mean? When an individual goes to sleep, the ruh exits the body. There is a connection during sleep with the ruh and the body. And the actual death that we know it as is when that the connection between the ruh and the body is severed. So now the ruh is completely inde independent from the body. And therefore the body rots and, and it becomes uh, old and it must be buried. Uh, this is what we call death. But in reality, it's life because the ruh is now free. That is, that is uh, death. Death is the freedom of the ruh. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this dua is saying that Allah has given us life after death. So every time we go to sleep, our ruh exits from our body in a similar manner in which it will finally exit when it's completely free. And so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives us that death. All praise is to Him because He has brought it back into us. If you really think about it, sleeping is very scary. When you go to sleep at night, you don't know if the ruh is going to come back in the morning. There's, there's no surety of that. There's no assurance. So we have become so accustomed to sleeping that, you know, it, it doesn't really phase us. Or I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. We don't think that if the ruh is not given the permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come back into my body, that's it. It's completely severed. It's gone. It's not going to be coming back. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obviously, he's the, he's the greatest of humanity. He has this full muraqaba, this connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He's always thinking about this. So he, when he he wakes up from sleep, the first thing that he's reminded of is Alhamdulillah, I got another day. 
this is another day the ruh came back. It was possible that it, it would the, the connection would be cut, but it came back. So this is how much Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he would say these very beautiful words, these, these du'as. And as believers, we should try our best to memorize these du'as. These are the masnoon du'as, the du'as that were on the on the lips of the Mubarak lips of Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they have a lot of effect. They, they, they will purify the heart. They will connect one to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in, in Surah Al-Najm, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't speak out of his own desires. What he speaks of is the wahi from Allah. So these du'as, they are a type of wahi. They're not Qur'an wahi, but they're a type of wahi because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying everything that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says is a type of wahi. So we should try our best to remember this du'a. There is one hadith where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was teaching the du'a of sleep to a sahabi. And so in there he says, uh, there's a, it's a lengthy du'a, and at the end he says, uh, That's the end of the du'a that, oh Allah, I have believed in the Nabi that you have sent, amongst other different things in that beautiful du'a. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the sahabi, this is the du'a. So then the Sahabi repeated it back to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is how we know that, you know, we should repeat things back to our teachers to make sure we really have it down. So then the Sahaba, Sahabi, he said, instead of, Wabi nabiyika alladhi arsalt, he said, Wabi rasulika alladhi arsalt. He, he, it's an interchangeable word, a Nabi and a Rasul. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a Nabi and he's the Rasul of Allah as well. So the Sahabi, instead of saying Nabi, he said Rasul. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, no, don't say Rasul, say Nabi, just like how I said. From this hadith, we understand that when, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us something of that dua, it doesn't necessarily have to be from his side. Maybe he's getting this type of wahi that you should say this type of dua. So they have, uh, the, the masnoon duas have a very powerful effect. And we will see throughout this book that there's masnoon duas for every aspect of our life. And it's so important for us to learn these and apply them. So this is one of them. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us life after he has given us death and to him is the return. So, I mean, we could spend a long time just breaking this beautiful dua down. Nabi Sallallahu wakes up, he's saying this thing, he, he's thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's cognizant of the fact that he could have died, but he has a new life. And wa ilayhi nushur, this is a reminder that we are going to die. Every time you wake up from sleep, you remember that there was, you know, a time period that I was just, it was just black. I was not thinking about anything. One day, it's actually going to be like that for real. I'm going to go into the qabr. It's going to actually be dark. So just by waking up in the morning, all of this at God is happening. The praise of Allah, the remembrance, the thing, the gratitude of life, the remembrance of death, and the, the cognization and then the realization that one day I will ultimately die for real. So this, that's one dua here. Another dua. Asbahna wa asbah al-mulku lillah. Wal-azamatu wal-sultanu lillah. Wal-izzatu wal-qudratu lillah. We have, we're experiencing the morning. We have woken up. And the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also in the morning. This is the translation of the dua. Asbahna, we have experienced the morning. Wa asbah al-mulku lillah. And we are all the slaves and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And greatness and kingship and power is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And grandeur and complete qudra and power is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is also part of the du'as of the morning. You know, just really thinking of what we should do. Compare this. You know, there's, there's still more du'as coming up, but just for a second, let's compare, uh, you know, the believer who wakes up with this type of reminder in comparison to a person who wakes up and the first thing that they're doing is they pull out the phone and they want to see how many emails they have gotten, how many messages on WhatsApp, how many different, uh, you know, messages on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And compare that to a person, a believer when they're waking up and they're just reminded of their mission. If you say these words and you ponder over that, your mind is going to be in the right place when you wake up. You're going to think that today could be my last day. I could die today. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and he has created me for a purpose. 
So already in the first moment of your day, you're already focused. And remember, we're trying to wake up before Salatul Fajr at the time of the Hajjud. And that's what Imam Al-Ghazali is saying. So all of these beautiful things happening is just a lot of tadkir. And this is what really benefits the, the believers. So Allah, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remind them, you are a reminder. You are a person that will remind. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells people things over and over. Uh, it's not that, okay, I learned something, that's enough. I, I don't need to be told again. I know it. It's a reminder. And that's why we need it. So this is a very beneficial way of waking up. It puts our minds in the right place and gives us that drive to really do something and achieve something in the day. And this is what a believer should have, the goal of, of what they want to achieve. And they really go for that. And obviously... Our main goal that unites all of us is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another dua. Asbahna ala fitratil Islam. We have woken up with the fitra of Islam, the, the correct disposition, the correct belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, that in belief in all the malaika, belief in all the kitabs, belief in all the anbiya alayhim wa salam, belief that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last nabi. We have woken up with the true belief. Wa ala kalimatil ikhlas. And we wake up with the kalimatul ikhlas, with the belief, with, with sincerity. وَعَلَى دِينِ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم. We wake up in this morning upon the deen of our Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَعَلَى مِلَّةِ أَبِينَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفَ مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And we also wake up on the method, the milla, the group, the deen of our father Ibrahim عليه السلام. حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا in the condition that we are solely focused towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His pleasure, in a state that we are all Muslim, وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And our father Ibrahim, he was not amongst the mushrikeen. So this is a very, also another beautiful dua. So he's just listing duas after duas. If we don't know these duas, we can say them in English, but the preferred way is to learn the Arabic and understand the meanings as well. We shouldn't just suffice on Arabic. I know many of us have memorized the du'as in Arabic, but we should also contemplate the meanings. Uh, you know, our heads won't come right, like the, you know, the term that I'm using, the head coming right in the morning, just being focused. That comes with understanding the meaning. So if we're just saying the words and we don't really know what we mean by them and, and the purpose of the du'a, that won't really have the full effect. We really want to understand it and really call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our hearts. So true dua comes from the heart. Uh, so we want our hearts, our hearts to be engaged in this. Then he continues even more dua, subhanAllah. Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namutu, wa ilayka nushu. Oh Allah, in you, in your remembrance, for your service, we have woken up. Wa bika amsayna, the same thing, in your service, in your us being slaves to you, in your remembrance, we are experience. We we will experience the night. Wabika nahya, and in your remembrance we live. Wabika namut, and your in your remembrance we die. Wa nushur, and to you is the return. Every night when we die, or you know we can use that term that we pass away, uh, the soul comes out of the body. It goes to. And different ahadith speak about it, you know, different people's souls and how, you know, you should sleep with wudu because the soul will uh, go into sajda according to some narrations. Uh, but all of these things, we are solely for Allah. This is true slavery. If you, if you just look at the, all of these du'as, this is just waking up from sleep. You would say anyone that's, you know, doesn't know, doesn't have the frame of mind of a, a believer or a Muslim, they will say, wow, these people like just waking up is just an act of worship. And that's what we were talking about before. He's saying that everything, every aspect and facet of your day is an act of worship. So treat it that way. So with all of this cognitive, you know, being aware of all of these things, putting it into practice, your waking up from sleep is an ibadah. And that's why, uh, you know, there are some narrations that the sleep of an alim is better than the worship of an abid. So a person, you know, us, we're just worshipers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't really have uh, great accolades or you know we're no, no one special so our ibadah our worship our taraweeh you know we all know what is the condition of our taraweeh you know 
our minds might not be there. We might be drifting somewhere. So the sleep of an alim, the sleep of an alim is better than our worship. Why? Because this is how an alim wakes up. So imagine how an alim sleeps. This is a person who is aware of the masnoon du'as, how to take care of it, how to continuously remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, if you compare a person going to sleep with the remembrance of Allah versus a person performing salah without the remembrance of Allah. So clearly that sleep, which is filled with the dhikr and adhkar and remembrance of death would have a greater effect on the heart and is more closer to remembering Allah than a salah which has no ruh, a salah which has no soul. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give our salahs a soul, to have it uh, a very uh, strong salah, continuously thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that salah and aware. Another dua. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an taba'athana fi hadha al-yawmi ila kulli khair. Oh Allah, we ask you to raise us up on this day towards everything that is good. We ask you to, to raise us up on this day. So you're in bed, you're getting up, and you're saying, oh Allah, allow me to do good today. Instead of just planning it, we're asking tawfiq from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give that into, uh, to us, inshallah, because we're asking it from him. And remember what Imam al-Ghazali is saying, that الفجر, wake up in the time of the hajjud. And we also know there's a, uh, there's a hadith in which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in the third portion of the night, and which is this time period before Fajr, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's mercy descends and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala yanzilu rabbuna kulla layla. This is the, the hadith that the Lord descends, meaning the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to be overwhelming on that time. And then there is a caller that calls out in the heavens. In the entire world, this is happening on a daily basis. This is not Laylatul Qadr, it's a daily basis. And this caller calls out and they say, is there anyone that wants forgiveness? Just ask right now. Is there anyone who has any need for a rizq and sustenance? He wants more uh, you know, financial success or whether any type of rizq? Ask, this is the time right now. Is there anyone who has any need? This is the time right now. So when we're reciting this dua and we're waking up from sleep and we're saying this, we're asking also, oh Allah, give us tawfiq to do khair. And this is the time period in which you're supposed to ask Allah and you will get, inshallah, what you're asking for because the caller is calling out. This is the time for it. So we're making all these duas and, and inshallah, they're being accepted. And when we make dua, we don't say maybe it's accepted. We say, no, it's accepted. Inshallah, it's accepted with a firm firmness of heart. Uh, you know, when we learn this from the hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when you ask for Jannah, Ask for Jannatul Firdaus. Which one of us here deserves Jannatul Firdaus? I don't think anyone here would say that we deserve Jannatul Firdaus. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that anyone who is asking for Jannah, ask for Jannatul Firdaus. Aim for the highest. So when we make dua, we should definitely have that certainty in, in our hearts. Definitely according to our amal, according to who I am and the sins that I have committed, my duas don't deserve to be accepted. But according to who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how much mercy he has, then it seems very possible that my du'as will be accepted. So that's why we make all these beautiful du'as. So he continues, Oh Allah, we ask you that you raise us on this day towards all good. And we seek your protection. And we seek your protection, O Allah, that we do any type of evil on this day, any type of sin, we seek your protection from any type of things that would make you upset, Ya Allah. O Najurrahu ila Muslim. And we also seek your protection from doing any type of evil to another believer, to another person, harming another person. O Yajurrahu Ahadun ilayna. And we also seek your protection from anyone causing any harm to us. Now imagine that you're waking up and this is the firm belief of the believer. You're making all these du'as. Number one, we want to do all good. Whatever we, we are going to engage in, inshallah, it's going to be halal, it's going to be good, it's going to earn the pleasure of Allah. Number two, we seek his refuge from his anger. So there's another du'a. 
minka. Oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from you. Because who is the one that can cause any type of harm? No one in this universe can cause any type of harm to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we seek Allah's protection from his own self, from his own anger and his displeasure. So the number one, we ask for his khayr and his pleasure. Number two, we seek his protection from his own displeasure. Number three, we seek the protection from causing any harm to anyone. And number four, we seek his protection from anyone doing apparent harm to us. Obviously, it's no one has a physical ability to harm us, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that ability into people if, and you know, it may happen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. So we seek Allah's protection from that. So these are some du'as. نَسْأَلُكَ خَيْرَ هَذَا الْيَوْمِ We ask you, Ya Allah, for the good of today. وَخَيْرَ مَا فِيهِ We ask you of the good of what is in it. وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّهِ We ask you of uh, protection. We ask you of your refuge from any type of evil in this day. وَشَرِّ مَا فِيهِ And any type of evil which is inside the day. وَشَرِّ مَا بَعْدَهُ And we seek your protection from any evil that is after this day. So, so many du'as, so many reminders just in waking up. <laughs> many of us, I'm speaking about myself, in a whole day we don't make this type of remembrance of Allah. We were not making this much remembrance of Allah in our entire day. And Imam al-Ghazali is saying that the true way to wake up has more remembrance in it than we have at times in our entire day. So now he says, فَإِذَا لَبِسْتَ ثِيَابَكْ When you wear your clothing, now look at this. You know, just the basic things of life and he's turning it into ibadah. When you wear clothing, make the niyyah that I am fulfilling the commandment of Allah that I have to conceal my body. This is a, an essential commandment that believers, mashallah, the people who are doing this in the world to the best degree are Muslims. We cover ourselves. We are very strict with that. And this is a very beautiful thing because it's a commandment of Allah. So when you put on that clothes, you put on your, your thobe, your, your shirt, your whatever you have, whatever is covering your body, you make the niyyah that I'm doing satrul awra, I'm covering my, my parts of my body, which are not supposed to be visible to people. Just by putting on clothing, you're getting thawab. And be very careful that when you put on your clothing, you're not trying to show other people your status with your clothing. Does this mean that we don't wear nice clothing? No. We wear nice clothing for the sake of Allah. Inna allaha jamilun yuhibbul jamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beautiful. He is the possessor of true beauty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to see beauty in his creation. So beautify yourself to the utmost degree. Especially when you come for salah. Especially when you... Uh, go for Salatul Jumu'ah These are the times in Eid These are the times you have to make yourself Extremely beautiful But we're not doing it for other people We're doing it for Allah Because I know no matter what Whether I'm at home Whether I'm in the masjid or Whether I'm at work The one individual who can see me at all of these times Is Allah So I'm beautifying myself for Him Not beautifying myself for anyone else So that doesn't mean that we don't beautify ourselves And we just wear a rag or something like that we make ourselves extremely beautiful. Make yourself fragrant. Make yourself beautiful. Wear the best of clothing. But do it for the sole pleasure of Allah. That Allah likes to see this on me. And he has given me this rizq. I'm going to wear that inshallah. So just wearing your clothing in the morning is ibadah. And just look at the beautiful morning of a believer. Imam al-Ghazali did a very beautiful job just putting it together. And really he didn't do much. He just put the du'as of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi together. So this is in the hadith. This is the du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We're learning from his life and from his daily schedule. So let us implement this. Try our best to wake up before Fajr. Try, and nowadays, alhamdulillah, we're doing that. If we're not staying up the whole night, we're waking up for suhoor. We're having that uh, before we start our fast. You know, let's try to make some of these du'as. These du'as can be readily available in, in different books of du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are the Masnu du'as of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You will find different variations in the du'as. As many as you can learn, try your best to learn them in Arabic. But remember, the key is the meaning itself. So if you don't know the, the Arabic, try to say it in whatever language you speak in. And, and say, you know, whatever we went over today, say these kind of things. Remember Allah. That is the key.
the remembrance of Allah. And when putting on the clothing, making niyyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with this clothing, and I'm covering my body parts, and that is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq for all this, because this only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As much as we want to do it, we may want to do it, but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not willed that, you know, that we are able to do it, then we will never be able to do it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that tawfiq, to give us tawfiq to continue to please him and allow us to please him and accept all of our a'mal in this beautiful month. Wa sallallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala ala khayr khalqi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahmin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.